Good morning, guys. This is Miss Keith from Journey of the Word Ministries, home of every name known to God, where we nurture relationship, not religion, and all are welcome. Um, I can't read the Bible verse this morning verbally, verbatim, so excuse me if I mess this up. Um, this morning, I just want to touch on the scripture that says, excuse me, no weapon that formed against us shall prosper, and that even the tongues that, um, that wag against us shall um, have judgment passed against them and that it is our heritage that God's righteousness should be passed upon to us um, I really feel like we only concentrate on the first section that says um, no weapon formed against you shall prosper now Keep in mind, as every pastor says, I know you've heard it because I've heard it a thousand times. It doesn't say no weapon will be formed, but it says it won't prosper. So that means that it won't be victorious in the end. Um, it's, it speaks on people that are going against you. Um, if you are a child of God and people are talking against you, um, plotting against you, moving against you, that's not going to work either. And God will make sure, and, and you've already heard, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And, and I'm not being a whole Hail Mary condemnation type of thing, but God will take care of them too, and eventually they'll see their light. But you don't have to be too concerned with that. You just know that whether it's conversation or actions that are being brought against you, God is going to take care of it. You have to be walking with him. You have to be obedient. Your heritage, so let's check out the word heritage. I wish I had looked it up biblically and found out what the uh, Hebrew and Greek terminology meant. I'll probably come back with that later. But for us in the good old um, standard English, um, heritage is uh, a reference to where you come from, your roots, what you belong to, what's naturally yours. Um, so God is saying to us, we are in his kingdom that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and it is our birthright to have this protection from him so how do you gain access to this protection how do you make sure that no weapon formed against you shall prosper how do you make sure that excuse me I'm tired that whatever you're going through is going to be a benefit for you not it, it's meant to hurt you but God's going to make sure it helps you no longer a, a trial but a testimony look at everything that you're going through try and change your vision from the glass has empty to glass half full be positive be prepared for everything but be positive um, the way that you can become a member of the no weapon formed against you shall prosper group is by starting to build that relationship with God. And it has to be personal. It has to be intimate. You have to be dedicated. You have to be disciplined. It's not um, something that you get just because you go to church every Sunday and go to Bible study on Wednesday and you pay your 10% tithes automatically. Those are all good things, but those things are not going to get you in the no weapon formed against you. Shall prosper crew. Not alone they are. So, we have to be doing those things because God is in our heart. We have to be loving our brothers and our sisters. We have to be putting God first. We have to be applying his principles to our everyday life. Um, I'm not, and I'm not saying you have to be a Bible thumper. Or you have to be perfect. Um, far from it, and to be honest. Very far from it. Um, what I'm saying excuse me <clears throat> what I'm saying is that you have to make a conscious decision every day when you wake up to thank the Lord and to spend some time with him that you have to make a conscious decision to change your life a little bit um, that you have to make a conscious decision to apply all of his principles to every decision every choice you made every little thing grows into a big thing you have to take steps. When you set a goal, you take small steps to get to that goal. Sorry, guys.
So when you take, when you set a goal, you take small steps to get to that goal. And then you're reaching your purpose. Uh oh. Sorry. And that's what you have to do when, <clears throat> that's exactly what you have to do every day. So remember the little things, apply God's principles to the little things. And in no way, shape, form am I telling you to be a martyr, to be unhappy, to be miserable, um, to be making sacrifices, to be broke, to not have fun. None of that. Those are religious, cultural contexts that have been misunderstood. The one thing that people overlook is Yeshua, Emmanuel, Jesus, whatever you would like to call him, whatever title you use for him. He advised that he didn't come to rewrite the Old Testament or to get rid of it, but to clarify and explain it. So this is telling me that we didn't understand the assignment. We didn't know what we were supposed to be doing and we misconstrued the directions in the Old Testament. We weren't living properly. We were trying to, but we weren't getting it. We weren't applying those principles. So the New Testament was an explanation or a breakdown for us. And guess what? We still ain't getting it because our ignorant selves believe, oh, well, the Old Testament is wiped away in the New Replacement. No, no, no. Study, study, study. It's improving. It's gaining an understanding. That's what it's doing. Now, think about it. He told you he wasn't abolishing it. He told you that you're supposed to seek knowledge and gain an understanding. He says that he speaks in riddles so that only his people will understand what he's saying. These are all key factors that we should remember. And if you are in a true relationship with God, it's your own personal relationship. It cannot be defined by another. I cannot tell you how to talk to your daddy, your God. I cannot tell you how to thank him, praise him, speak to him, anything. Uh, I'm trying to get people to break away from <clears throat> uh, religious traditions or thoughts because the Lord doesn't care about those things. We do as a culture. That doesn't have anything to do with God. That's religion. And that's what I want people to realize. So your first step is to begin getting to know God intimately. In relationship, you know someone intimately. In relationship, you you know some of their secrets. You, you want to try and please them. You converse with them. That's what you need to do with God on a daily basis. Don't look at how someone else does it either. Do it how you want to do it. Now, that's how you become a member of the No Weapon Formed Against You Shall Prosper Crew. Have a good morning, and thank you for joining me at Journey of the Word Ministries. Have a blessed day, guys. Bye.